This video is sponsored by Square Enix. Hello my friends, my name is Abdul Rahman, aka Pakistani Pepper, and today I wanted to share my thoughts with you about Live Alive. I want to thank Square Enix for sending me a copy of the game in return for my thoughts, and I hope this review can help you make a more informed decision about whether this game is right for you. In my time with the game, I found Live Alive to be a game that I believe is a must play for fans of both classic RPGs and strong narrative-driven gameplay. It is a game with remarkable variety in its character and story design, incredibly ambitious gameplay, and the same beautiful visual and audio presentation we've come to expect from series like Octopath Traveler. But behind that modern coat of paint lies an RPG that also retains enough of its old-school roots to satisfy that itch for fans who are looking for that 8-bit nostalgia while being an experimental, brave game in its own right. Live Alive is a remake of the 1994 cult classic of the same name for the Super Famicom. In this remake, you star as one of seven people across time. Unlike Octopath, though, the stories are more self-contained. You can hop in and out of different character arcs and complete them in any order, so the experience is less like a long linear adventure and more like an anthology. You will see thematic connections between stories, but they also work well separately. And that is what really makes this game great. In Live Alive, you have a highly varied cast of characters, stories, and themes. For example, you can play as a shinobi in feudal Japan, a kung fu master in imperial China, an outlaw in the Wild West, or even a robot in the distant future. The design in each story varies dramatically by the theme, and that is where we see both the highs and the challenges of this kind of game. Live Alive is great at giving us a wide range of stories. Each tale is both compelling and well-made, meaning they are all strongly aligned with their respective themes. The character designs, environments, and even gameplay changes greatly in each story and lines up with the character you are playing. The shinobi, for example, can mask himself to be invisible and sneak in instead of fighting at every turn. It legitimately makes each story look, sound, feel, and play differently, and that's a testament to just how much this experience is unlike most other linear RPGs on the market. The challenge, however, is that the same variety also means that some stories definitely feel stronger than others, and that will change based on what genre you are a fan of. For example, I am a much bigger fan of Edo Japan as a setting, than I am of the Wild West for my stories, and I definitely enjoyed the former story more as a result. Each individual story is well made, and you won't necessarily dislike any section. I didn't, for example. But there were times where I found myself thinking that the story I am playing now is not the same level as the story that I was playing earlier. This is something that should be expected from every compilation or anthology. The same variety that makes the game diverse and unpredictable also makes it somewhat inconsistent. But the great thing is that no story feels like an outright dud. Every character is well developed and the stories move at a meaningful pace. If you don't particularly enjoy one, you may still end up enjoying another. I will avoid discussing the later parts of the story and I've kept my recording to only the opening segments because I legitimately feel that this game does twists and turns better than most RPGs, and I would recommend you experience them without reading about them first. The combat is solid and likely the least surprising element of the game. It plays like a classic turn-based RPG on a grid, and unlike other retro games, it isn't catastrophically difficult. And here too we see the commitment to creating different worlds for the different tales. Both the enemies and the gameplay elements change based on the story you are playing and align well with the theme of that segment overall. If you have played Octopath Traveler, you will know what to expect in the sound and visuals department. This is a beautiful game. Each world or story looks, at times, nothing like the other. And the sheer variety on display in the sound effects department is particularly good, where the music is always catchy and based on the mood and story, sounds like it's from different genres. Yet all the worlds feel connected and it still makes sense that this music belongs on the same soundtrack. Voice acting is available in both the original Japanese and the perfectly solid English as well. I spent time playing it on both the Steam Deck and my PC and I found there to be no difference in the experience. And the UI design now feels more comfortable on the Steam Deck than it did for Octopath Traveler 2. Here I also want to talk about something that's bigger than just this game that I think Square Enix is doing correctly. This is a game that's based on a remake from something that came out nearly 30 years ago. And it did two things very right behind the scenes. First, they brought back series director Takashi Tokita and composer Yoko Shimomura. A lot of new remakes are made without the involvement of the original artists, and I'm glad that wasn't the case here. The second thing is more about the preservation of gaming. Gaming is no longer a new field. We are in a place where we legitimately have to talk about how older games can be preserved and still experienced, like the cases with film and literature, for example. And while there have been several older gaming companies that seem to lock down their own catalog, 
Square Enix has consistently made their older catalog available to legally purchase and enjoy, either through remakes like this or direct ports. This is a stance that a lot of older gaming companies are not taking with regards to accessing older games, and I'm glad that Square Enix is being more open to keeping their older catalog in the hands of gamers. If you are a fan of retro RPGs, anthologies, or just interested in exploring a game that genuinely attempted new and innovative things 30 years ago that still are not being done in other RPGs, I truly hope you consider giving Live Alive a chance. And I hope this video helped you in making a more informed decision about whether or not this game is for you. I want to once again thank Square Enix for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions or would just like to leave a comment, be sure to reply below and I will answer to the best of my ability. And if this video was helpful, consider liking and subscribing. And to all the Pepper Pals, this is Abdul Rahman, aka Pakistani Pepper, saying peace out, stay peppery, and don't forget, sometimes life's best lessons are in the stories we hear least. Have an awesome day, everyone.